if I tell you that the most powerful tool in Resolve is also most accessible and used by every professional but you. So in this tutorial, we're not gonna just unleash the potential of that tool, but also I'm gonna show you common mistakes that you might be making when using it. And guys, there's about 51% of you that are not subscribed to the channel, so enough with window shopping. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's jump in. So if we look at the definition of the primaries color wheels, it says that it affect your brightness and hue of the image based on specific luminance ranges. So what does that mean? All right, so now we're inside Resolve and here's a grayscale image. We're gonna be focusing on these four little guys right here, lift, gamma gain, offset, all right, LGGO. Start with our lift and see what it affects on the image. So focus right here and also on the scopes. So if I go down in my lift, you can clearly see that it is biased toward the bottom, right? How it's affecting the image. So it's really affecting the shadows and then it's lifting the shadows. And now if I reset that, do the same thing with gamma, let's bring it down you can see that it's a lot more gentle and it's anchoring the shadows and the highlights and it's not necessarily messing with that. Reset that, let's try with gain. And just like what we saw was happening with lift, same is happening with the gain. See like how it's coming down? It's bringing it down and then it's pushing it up, okay? So all of that is making a lot more sense. Now, why is that important? That is extremely important because beginners usually, without knowing what each knob is doing, they just kind of go in and start doing things. But now looking at this, you can start making sense to like what exactly part of the image that you're affecting by switching each knob. Going back here, there's one more aspect to it, which is our offset. So this tool, if you look at it, at the beginning looks very similar to what Gamma is doing but if we start focusing on what's happening on our anchors, meaning look at the shadows and how they're being lifted. Well, that's not what was happening with gamma, right? Like let's try gamma again and that's not happening. The, the behavior of this is gonna be very different on a footage, but I wanted to show you on a grayscale image. So it's like very black and white. What happens when we add certain hue values in a specific part of the image. So let's try that now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in my lift and I'm gonna pump in tons of magenta. So let's park our magenta right here. So the image looks like this. If I do before and after, you can see the dark areas are getting a lot of color, okay? So this is what it looks like. So let's go ahead and grab a still. So I'm gonna right click here and say grab still. So we have that here now. Let's reset that and let's try to do the same thing with our gamma now. So I'm gonna try to go up in the same area where we were and if I do before and after, we're in the same exact area. And if you look at when we pump magenta in our gamma, the results are very different than when we did that with our lift. I see so many beginners creating extreme looks and their shadows are very contaminated and it's probably because they're doing a lot of heavy lifting in their lift and it's adding that color into their blacks. Whereas when you affect your gamma and try to push a certain hue, it's not necessarily affecting your blacks as much. Okay, let's save that now, reset it. And this time we're gonna do the same thing with gain. So if I were to take my gain in a similar area and do before and after, you can see even compared to our gamma, now we're comparing it with gamma, that right here we're adding a lot more color in the upper mids compared to what happened with gamma gamma kind of lived in this range right the hue values and they were very subtle like nothing was breaking whereas in the gain there is a pretty strong shift that happens right here that i'm not a massive fan of but time and place right like sometimes you got to add highlights like warmth in your highlights to create a certain mood so all these things are very important there is no right or wrong answer but looking at it right here on a grayscale image starts to make a lot more sense. Like when you're actually grading your footage, which color or hue you wanna introduce in which specific luminance value, right? Let's save this, reset it. And now what happens if we do the same thing in our offset? It, the results are gonna be very different, okay? So if I do before and after, now you can see 
it's actually darkened our overall image too because now it's happening on a global level right like offset is basically making a broad change it's not twisting or turning hues it's just shifting the entire image into that space so the closest match for offset technically should be gamma so what if we bring that up and look at it with gamma if i do this the luminous value kind of stayed put right like where we set it and then everything else kind of shifted in the middle color wise or hue wise but with our offset it's actually bringing the luminance down and then taking everything into um, that specific hue that we're adding very important changes to see on a grayscale to start making sense of like this is what happens to my image when i do it on my actual footage which leads us to now go into our footage and uh, let's come out of our reference and now here we are we recently did a survey majority of you regardless of the skill set are struggling with shot matching skin tones balancing and working with 8-bit footage so i created a one hour long free training that covers all of that plus we'll wrap up the training with an extensive q a and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage power grades and some of my personal luts this is shot on red so all I did is just went from log to rec 709. So I did that conversion here. So the thing that a beginner would do or a rookie would do is this, like they would make very literal changes, like very linear changes. So what do I mean by that? They would just look at the scope and go, I want to max it out. So they're going to go on their gain and they're going to kind of lift it up and they're going to go in their lift and they're going to pull it down. Like, you know, let's take full advantage of this waveform. They're looking at the waveform and they're just kind of going with that and they'll be happy with something like this whereas a pro would do the opposite like if i'm looking at this going nah man this just looks a bit too digital like i want to pull the sting out like if you look at like movies everything is very gentle and perfect roll off so what i would do here is i would massage it so i would take my gamma and gain and simultaneously go in reverse so i'm gonna lift my gamma and i'm gonna pull my gain down look what happens so I'm going to do this, right? And if I park it here and if I do before and after, look at how much of a difference I made. And now we can kind of split the difference, right? So now I'm going back. And if I do before and after, still massive change. Nothing is looking murky. Like the, the whites are not looking gray. They're not looking fake. Everything is looking good. Uh, what happens if I take my lift now and kind of pull it down just a little bit, not too much. So if I do before and after, so then that's going to add, introduce a little bit more contrast on the low end. And, and with the technique that we use with gamma and gain, we create a really nice roll off on the top end. By bringing the lift down, we added some contrast on the bottom end. So we're still giving it, we're taking contrast out on the top end, adding it, ingesting it a little bit more on the bottom end, a perfect harmony to create an image that we want. And now if you look at the two, it's just a lot more filmic, cinematic, right? And uh, where everything is sitting. And so that is the first thing, rookie versus pro. Now we're gonna move on to the second point, which is let's say we're creating a teal and orange they're gonna start at this point and they're just gonna jump in. So I'm gonna go under my gamma or uh, lift, I'm sorry, and I'm gonna do something like this, okay? And then I'm gonna take my gain and I'm gonna do something like this. And I'm just trying to create like a very extreme look. So if I do before and after, and if we look at our colorized waveform, we can see that we're starting to create something really cool. The problem here is that if I move forward and you look at it, and if I really punch in and show you something, is that there is so much teal seeping into my blacks that it just started to look really fake. Like look at the eyebrows, like look at the under eyes, and it's just, I don't know, like look at the um, facial hair, like there is just this teal weird color kind of seeped into it and that's just not real life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that version and I'm going to undo all the color changes that we made. So we're going to go back here and as a professional, what we would do is we would look at our vector scope and go, well, the image needs to be balanced first. And if I want to create a warm teal and orange look, I'm not going to balance it perfectly. I'm still going to keep it in that world a little bit. And that's the little sauce. OK, you don't always have to balance your image to perfect whites to whites, because if the director or the client wants a warm look, inherent warm look, then you can even your balancing could like be biased toward that warm look. But 
not this crazy. This is almost like monotone because if, if you're looking at my image waveform right here, it's just like, it's just warm. That's it. There's nothing else to it. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to, this is where I'm going to use my offset LGGO. I'm going to use my O here and you can see right here what I'm going to start doing literally looking at this vector scope and just countering how much it's sitting right here. So I'm going to start taking that in the other direction. Uh, I personally like to always go too far and then kind of just like come back. I'm just looking at his skin tone. Where does the skin tone should fall for a Caucasian male, right? So this is kind of looking good, but like, look at how much we did. Like, look at where my white is sitting now, but it still has a little bit of the warmth. And if you look at my vector scope, they're still leaning toward that. But by the changes that I made, look at the teal, automatic teal that I introduced right here. So you see like how Rookie had to artificially create those colors, me, taking the image that we have and making these broad changes without twisting the hues, we already effortlessly put everything there. So now we're not deteriorating the quality. We're not introducing any artifacting, any banding, and we're just playing off of like what was there. That is base, okay? And that's all created using LiveCam again. You're just seeing that I'm, I'm very restricted to only these tools and not using anything else. Now let's introduce a little bit of that teal and orange and not go over, over the top. So what I would do is like, I would just like literally in my lift, uh, just nudge it a little bit, you know, so like cooler tones, I'm taking it down there. And now I'm gonna take my gamma and I'm gonna start adding a little bit of warmth. I'm warming up the image. Just little touches, little touches, right? I'm gonna, let's take my lift a little bit more and I'm gonna keep it right here. I'm gonna take my gamma and I'm just gonna keep warming it up. Like I'm stylizing it at this point, okay? This is where it just get that questioning thing like, oh, I liked it better before Kazi. That's not the point. That was color correction. This is color grading. So we're, we're like stepping into that, like, you know, La La Land world, right? Like now we're just gonna, not La La Land the movie, but like a La La Land. Like now we're gonna start having fun and create something. Can I go more, like push it more a little bit like that? I'm not minding it, right? Because again, the way we built it, if I do before and after, like this was like such a icky warm, now we still have like a really warm image with harmony. We created something that is a perfect dance. And now I can actually go in my offset and let's just say if I want to lean the whole thing toward that. Now I'm just doing that. Like, look at what I'm doing with my offset. I'm driving the whole thing there. But the beauty of it is that because we created that little separation with our lift and gain, that little dance, right? Like we cooled off our lifts and we warmed up our highlights or our gain. So we created that split toning um, between those two uh, luminance ranges. Then we can go in on our offset and then just tilt the whole thing like a seesaw. Like now where do we want to put it? So that's what's happening here. So if I do before and after, that's pretty cool, right? Like now, now we can get into like our uh, gamma and gain. Can we create a little bit more contrast because that's gonna add a little bit more color. But before I do that, I wanna just like compare it with like the rookie version. At the time it was kind of looking like we were creating a lot of color separation and it was pretty good, but that's the rookie version and then that's our version, right? So if I do before and after and like really swipe it, and you can see the difference. Primaries, people sleep on it. People sleep on it because it's available in your Lightroom, it's available in your uh, Premiere Pro, Final Cut 7, Final Cut 10 has their funky thing, but even Final Cut 7, like I'm saying, back in 2006, 2007 had color wheels. So then we just feel like, uh, how good can it be? Let me jump into Magic Mask. Let me use Depth Map. Let me use, uh, you know, the, the relighting effect. We, we overcomplicate our grades but you are just sleeping on the most powerful tool that you have at your disposal, whether you're using paid or free version of Resolve. And then the final thing that I wanna talk about is this. Rookies, they would do a lot of granular changes. So instead of like making these broad, big changes, they're always doing like these too many small changes. And then what happens is that when it comes to shot matching, it becomes a game of whack-a-mole because you go to the next shot and you're like, oh my God, like I did these 18 things. Oh, how am I gonna match it? How am I gonna match it? Like you just go crazy. You've done so many little granular things. It's gonna be impossible to copy paste it from shot to shot. And it's gonna take you so much longer compared to like, boom, these massive changes, not to mention that it also keeps your image so much cleaner. Twisting things, right? Like too much unnecessarily. That comes later when we're creating looks. It's always interesting to structure a video in a way that makes the most sense when you're watching it from start to finish. 
So hopefully this video accomplished that. And you guys have probably seen so many videos on primaries and I hope that from this video, you've seen information that never really clicked before. And now you can apply this stuff and get crazy results. Check it out. Love you guys. Until next time.